Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Is your Mac not quite right? Here are 10 ways your Mac could be acting strangely and how to fix it. So often when people ask me questions, it's about something on their Mac that doesn't seem quite right. And sometimes the solution is pretty simple. For instance, let's say that things are suddenly moving very slowly on your Mac. There are a lot of different reasons for this, and I've got whole videos on this subject, but two of the main reasons are space on your drive or browser tabs. So to check space on your drive, go to system settings and then go to general and storage. And here you're gonna see how much storage you're using. If you have less than 10 or 20 gigs available, it's probably gonna make your Mac run slowly. Ideally, you should have 40 or 50 gigs, maybe even more available if you're using apps that you know are memory intensive. Your Mac uses space on the drive as overflow for memory. And when you don't have enough space available, it can't do that. It's called swap. And it can't swap if there's no space available on the drive. So if your Mac is running slowly, free up more space over here on the right by archiving old files or deleting things you no longer need. But the next most common reason is probably browser tabs. People don't realize that each tab in a browser is kind of like a separate app. So you may think, oh, I only have a few apps open, just mail, notes, and my browser. Why is my Mac running slowly? But if your browser has 20 tabs, that's like 20 different apps running at the same time. It's really easy to go to a tab and close it and simply return to the page later. If it's a page you use often, you could add it to bookmarks if you like, but you don't need to keep tabs open all the time. If your Mac is running slowly, try to reduce your reliance on leaving tabs open for web pages you're not currently using. Now, this one I hear all the time. It's when the keyboard isn't working right. And if I ask more questions, it turns out most keys work right like this. But then when you get to certain keys, you don't get anything doesn't actually work. They press the key, like the U key, I, O, or J, or K, or L, and you don't get those characters. So when it's those specific characters on your keyboard, what's happening here is something called mouse keys. So you go into system settings, and then go to accessibility, and then go down to motor, and not keyboard, but pointer control, because mouse keys is a way to use the keyboard to move the pointer. You can see I've got it turned on here. It'll allow you to use certain keys on your keyboard to move the pointer around, but that means you can't use them to type. So if I simply turn off mouse keys, then I can now use those keys as before. People don't often look here because they think, well, I didn't go through all of that to turn it on, but there are shortcut ways to turn on mouse keys that you may have accidentally triggered and now you've got mouse keys on without ever having gone to system settings. But another reason the keyboard could be acting strangely is if you go to system settings and then go to where you would expect, keyboard, and then look under input sources and click edit. Here for most people, you should just see one listing on the left, and that's the keyboard that you have. But if say you were in here playing around with this and you added another keyboard and switched to it, it could make the keys on your keyboard work differently. For instance, adding the French keyboard here, you could see how the A key is in the upper left-hand corner instead of Q, which is now below it. So suddenly it seems like some of the keys work and others don't. So make sure you have the right keyboard selected to match the keys that are shown on your physical keyboard, and perhaps you remove any that you're not actually using. By the way, if you find this video is valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support Mac most at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macbostcom slash Patreon. Here's another way things could look very weird indeed. Many times I had people say they're suddenly seeing numbers all over the screen. What are they and how can they get rid of them? Well, this is another accessibility feature. I'm going to go into system settings and then go to accessibility again. And this one is voice control. And you can see here I have voice control turned on and there are shortcuts that allow you to turn this on without going to system settings. So you could have accidentally turned it on and you could see it's actually showing an overlay with item numbers. So if you have this on and you don't need voice control, simply turn off voice control and those numbers will go away. 
Here's another odd thing you might see, text that just appears in these boxes. Here you can see that wherever I move my pointer, I get text showing me either the text that's under the pointer or sometimes the names of buttons and things like that. This is another thing people accidentally turned on and it's called hover text. So go into system settings here and accessibility and then look for hover text and you can turn it off here. Note that it also has a mode where it only shows what's under the pointer when you hold down a key like the command key. So as you're going to do things like command C for copy, it suddenly appears. Here's another Mac feature that people sometimes turn on by accident and then can't figure out what's going on. If you're not familiar with Stage Manager, but you turn it on accidentally, you may not know what's going on here with suddenly Windows being here on the left like this. And if you select one of them, it replaces what's there and then that window flies over there. Sometimes you don't even see these windows here. Like if I go to Safari, Safari is too big, so it actually hides those items here and then they pop out here on the left. Now, if you use Stage Manager, this all makes perfect sense. This is what you want. But if you've never used Stage Manager before and you turn it on, suddenly everything seems very different. You can simply turn off Stage Manager by going to Control Center and then look for the Stage Manager button. Click that and it turns it off and everything returns to the normal mode where you just see multiple windows from multiple apps overlapping. Sometimes you may put your Mac to sleep and find it doesn't go to sleep or after putting it to sleep, at some point it wakes up. And this could be for several reasons. One simply could be that an app is waking it up. If you go to Activity Monitor, launch that app, and then you go to Energy, you'll see here, Preventing Sleep. Look in that column and see if any of the apps you currently have running, even things running in the background, have a yes. In this case, for instance, the screen recording software I'm using is preventing sleep, but I normally wouldn't be screen recording and expect my Mac to go to sleep. But if you see yes next to some other app, know that you've got to quit that app in order for your Mac to stay asleep. But another reason may simply be your mouse. A lot of third-party mice are very sensitive and if they're sitting on a desk and there's slight vibrations that make the mouse move, even imperceptibly, it may wake up your computer. If your mouse has an off switch, try switching it off and see if your Mac will sleep better with your mouse switched off. Here's another issue that comes down to an accessibility feature. Say you suddenly can't see your entire Mac screen. You can go to the top and there's the menu bar and you can go to the bottom and there's the dock but the entire screen isn't on your physical display at one time. That simply could be that you have turned on Zoom. So go again to System Settings and then Accessibility and then look for Zoom and turn that off. Now, this happens when you have Zoom style set to full screen, but if you have it set to something like Picture in Picture, you may see something like this, which is also Zoom. And this is also kind of strange if you don't know what it is. But if you don't need it, simply turn it off and that will go away. Now, let's say you go to a web page and this is what you expect to see. Here's one of my pages and you could see here's the video and comments below and everything. But what happens if you go to a web page and instead of this, you see something like this. In this case, the video is missing. It seems to be missing a lot of the different features there. You can't figure out why you're not seeing all the navigation elements and regular things you would expect. This is simply because you have reader view turned on. You could see this little indicator here showing that you do, and you can hide reader. You can also go to view, and this is where you show reader or hide reader, and you can see the keyboard shortcut, shift command R. Using reader view is great when you're reading an article and just wanna focus on the text, but for pages that have more complex elements, it could really mess them up and make them impossible to use or figure out how to accomplish something on the page. Now, if you always go to a website and it's always in reader view, it's probably because in Safari settings under websites and then look for reader here at the top, you've got it set to maybe always be on. So look for the website there and see if you've set it to be always on. That means anytime you go to that site, it's going to automatically be in reader view. You can either set it to always be off on that site or simply select it and remove to remove that from the list of preferences, then the website will just act normally. Now, another problem you could have is something that doesn't appear to be on your screen at all, but something that has to do with your keyboard. 
you've got the keys at the top of your keyboard, the F keys, F1 to F12 or more if you've got an extended keyboard. And they also have special symbols on the top. And you may be used to using those to do one of those special features. Like for instance, the F12 key turns the volume up while F11 will actually turn the volume down. But then all of a sudden, it's not working. Those keys don't turn the volume up or down. Or conversely, you may use F11 and F12 for special functions inside of some apps that say the keyboard shortcut for a certain thing is F11 and F12. And they work fine, and then suddenly they don't. And instead, it's controlling volume. These keys have two modes. Think of how the letter keys work, like the A key. When you press A, you get a lowercase a. Hold the shift key down and press A, and you get an uppercase a. The F keys at the top do the same thing. They'll do one thing when you just press them. But if you hold the FN or globe key down, then they do the other thing. So it's the FN or globe key, not the shift key that modifies these. If you go into system settings and then go down to keyboard, go to keyboard shortcuts, and then look for function keys, you'll find the toggle switch here. This toggles whether or not they are F keys, like F1 and F2, when you press them normally, and then you need the globe or FN key to use the features shown on them, or the features like volume up and volume down are the default, and the FN or globe key needs to be used to switch them to things like F11 and F12. You can have it toggled either way and just use the FN and globe key to get to the other set of functionality. But it's good to understand how this toggle switch works and why those keys may have changed on you if you've changed this toggle. And finally, let's talk about sound. Say sound on your Mac is working fine, and then all of a sudden it isn't. The videos are playing without any sound. You play music and you don't get any sound. You don't hear any system beeps or anything. Now, of course, it could be just that you've turned your volume all the way down. So you can turn it up using the volume keys on your keyboard, or you could go here into Control Center and you can adjust your volume right here. But also, it could be because you've switched the output. So it's sending the sound to a different device. If I click here in Control Center, it actually will allow me to choose the output. And you can see I've got a lot of different things here. And you may have, say, a set of external speakers or even headphones attached. You would see all of these here, and you may have switched to one. Like, for instance, the sound could be playing out of headphones, and you're not actually wearing those headphones, which is why you don't hear the sound. Or maybe you switch to a different display that doesn't actually have the volume turned up or the speakers enabled. So go here to choose the output. You can also get to this by going to system settings and then looking for sound here on the left. And you've got output here and you could choose where the output goes to. The same thing is true for microphones. If you go to input, you may have multiple microphones here. For instance, I've got two, the ones on my Mac's display and also a separate external microphone. If you switch to one, and many apps allow you to switch inside that app, so you may not realize you switched it. Now, suddenly, when you try to record with your microphone, it's not working. So check to make sure the right input source is set there, and also that your input volume is turned up. A common thing might be to have this turned all the way down for some reason. Maybe you accidentally turned it down when video conferencing and you used it as a way to kind of mute your mic and you forgot that. So make sure this is turned up a decent amount so that you've got input and you could test that right here. You could see the input level as you speak so you can get your input right before returning to the app that you were using to record. So there were 10 very common problems that people have with their Macs that make things act strangely but are hard to figure out. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.